Hey everyone, in this episode we're going to be taking a look at the movie Aquaman, the latest DC film. We're going to be exploring the characters, the story, and the visuals. All that and more in episode 105 of The Realist Podcast. Listeners, welcome to the Realist Podcast. I am Oscar. I am Donnie. And we have our producer Ruben. Hello. Who is gonna say hello for the final time, maybe. We'll see if he uh, last time. <laughs> we'll see if he commits to our uh challenge. Uh for those that didn't listen to the last episode, we just challenged Ruben to say a movie quote instead of hello uh for twenty nineteen. So I have a question. Is it does it have to be movie quote or can it be movie and television quote? Uh, I think it would have to be movie since we're just a movie okay, podcast. Makes sense. <laughs> I can because there's a lot of TV quotes that I can that were I, that came to mind. I can imagine. Yeah, did I do that? <laughs> How rude! <laughs> All right. talking about Willis. Someone stuck in the '90s. Hold on. Right what, can I, I do this challenge? <laughs> 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 no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yes, so this episode is going to be a spoiler review for Aquaman. Dang, we didn't say that uh, on the Mary Poppins <laughs> episode. <laughs> we ne- I never say it. I never. F- I never remember. I mean, to say in, it. in the defense, though, that movie's been out for a week, so you have had had a chance to yeah, see that's it. That's true. Um, I think I feel like you know, the spoiler only really comes for like the first weekend and the first like few days. Well, yeah, that's true. Because by the time our episodes are out, they've they've seen. Hopefully, they've seen it. And it's 105 episodes in, so if you don't know, we do spoiler discussion. Right. Uh, if this is your first time listening, guess what? We do spoiler discussion for all <laughs> our movies. So uh, yes, before we go into that, um, what did I want to ask you? I forgot what I wanted to ask, but oh well. <laughs> It'll come to you. Probably. probably. Um, but I guess without further ado, we're just going to go straight to this. Donnie, what are your initial thoughts about Aquaman? Aquaman. I thought it was freaking amazing. It was a great, great movie. Um, not going to lie. I didn't know. <laughs> it seems to be like how I start every episode. <laughs> I didn't know much going in. About I didn't that. read the book. I didn't see the previous movie. <laughs> <I know. laughs> They're going to be like, why are you even doing a movie podcast at some point? <laughs> Um, I didn't know much about Aquaman. I knew a couple of things. Uh, we we watched Young Justice. Yeah, uh, Aqualad Young is Justice on there. Outsiders comes out next week. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to say, um, which has Aqualad and Aquaman has been in some of those episodes. Um, obviously, I saw Justice League. Whoops. Woo! So you know, I, I wasn't completely in the dark about Aquaman, which is fair. Which is practically. Everyone, practically the general public, that did not, they knew the presence of Aquaman and that he's a character that, you know, does all underwater things and lives underwater, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yes, unless you were a comic book fan and you delved more deeper into the character, their basic understanding is, you know, he has water powers or something with water mm-hmm. and he's a superhero with Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman. So. Right. Um but yeah, man, I, I really, really liked this movie. I, it exceeded my expectations. I think one of my worries going into this was that because it was underwater and because they were going to have to rely a lot on CGI, I thought that maybe some of the scenes would be a little um, a little messy, maybe. Maybe get a little uh, not so clear at times. Right. Because, you know, there was going to be have all these fight sequences and a lot of things happening underwater. But... I thought the the visuals were really great. They really they really exceeded my expectations, and I really liked Aquaman. It was just dope. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I mean, the characters were great. I really liked uh, Black Manta. That was the, the yes. villain the the villain that he was fighting against, um, and uh, just that whole you know with spoiler alert we already said, but like how he lost his dad in the beginning, and that's kind of like the driving force as to why he's. Um, Becoming the villain he is. Becoming the villain that he is. And I really liked that. Uh, And I just thought it was a fun movie. Like, it was fun. It was exciting. Uh, You know, it was It's just really enjoyable to watch. Really entertaining. I thought the cast was great. Um, The visuals were great. And it was just, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Awesome. So, for those that uh, just are not aware of Aquaman, um, how dare you? First of all, but uh, no, the movie Aquaman is just about Arthur Curry, um, that he learns that he is the heir to the underwater kingdom of Atlantis, uh, and he must step forward to lead his people and be the hero for the world because his brother is trying to attack the surface. So that's generally the the plot of it. Uh, This movie does star uh, Jason Momoa as Aquaman, Amber Heard as Mera, 
uh, Nicole Kidman as uh, Queen Atlanta, and we also have um, what's his name, Patrick Wilson <laughs> as Ocean Master or mm-hmm. Orm. Uh, and so yes, we have a great cast directed by James Wan. And so, we also have Ludi Lin, yes, who plays Merc in the film. Was not perfectly placed at all, <laughs> but I like what you did there. Last yes, but not least. We couldn't forget him. Uh, Not at all. Yeah, if you haven't checked out our interview with uh, Ludi Lin, definitely check that out. It was awesome to be able to talk to him and get some insight from his character, um, which which is in the middle of the movie. So we'll, we'll definitely talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. But yes. So my my thoughts about this one uh, is that it's fantastic. It exactly what I wanted uh, in Aquaman. It's exactly what I'm already used to reading the comics and knowing this universe. And I think that's one of the things that as as a comic book fan of the character, and I, I can't say that to every Marvel character, unfortunately, and that's had more like, movies made already. But for me with DC Comics, I know these characters very well um, in the same way that, you know, any other person that reads the books of, of movies that get adapted. <laughs> but, uh, you know, to me, this one was really awesome to be able to just feel like it's exactly ripped out of the comic books uh in terms of the characters and story, not necessarily the visuals. Obviously, they took you know unique approaches to how they wanted to create the characters. Uh, Jason Momoa looks nothing like Aquaman in the comics, uh, and and to me the the thing that really stood out was that it just they the term fun is being thrown out a lot with this movie, but I don't feel like the that word is necessarily giving it the right feeling of it. I feel like this movie like took what the premise was, which can be silly to some degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yet it said what would make this not be too silly and rather what would make this kind of be cool. Uh, and it succeeded. They worked very well. They created seven kingdoms that we got a little sample for for each one. Mm-hmm. Uh, they made Atlantis really be like a place that you legit can see. Like, I can believe that that's actually a place. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Like this movie, it was so kind of. I, I, I'm I'm saying like fantasy like I guess, but um, which is appropriate. It was so fantasy like that it could have easily been like fan- fantasy to the extent that this is so unbelievable and so far fetched and and kind of silly in a, yeah, in a bad exactly. way. But it wasn't like it was like for it being this like under you know underwater place and all these realms. Like it was they made it really like slightly believable and and really interesting to yeah you, you want to know more about it wasn't like oh because some you know some some of these like uh, i don't want to throw i don't want to throw a movie under the bus but i've seen movies where i'm like this is so far-fetched like uh, I, I i'm not buying it or it just it's too it's too made up for me i'm, I'm not i'm not invest i'm not investing anything into this yeah. i'm not getting anything out of it but this movie I, it was never like that no it was always there was always some some real sense of realism there that it made it seem like this could really be, you know, even even, exactly. the, you know, despite the fact that they were like, you know, uh, well, I mean, what, what are they called? The Like he Aquaman is is half human and half Atlantean, Atlantean yes. right? So like, you know, you, even like the fact that there's these Atlanteans that like live in water and, and look like humans and, you know, that could really turn some people off and be like, that's so far fetched, like whatever, get out of here. But it, it wasn't. And it wasn't, it's, you know, they didn't like give them gills and it didn't look weird or they didn't do something really, I don't know. I just was, I was really into it. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And uh, to be able to, to get that, to get the, the, what I enjoyed reading from the comics now on the big screen where the audience are willing to look into this character and be like, all right, I'll, I'll watch, I'll sit and watch. Uh, it's really awesome that it that it's that it's doing well and it's being recognized very well. Unfortunately, it did get snubbed for visual effects for the Academy Award. Boo. Um, so that that in, that in itself is definitely uh, we boycotting the Oscars. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're not. We're not. Um, but it should have got nominated. It, it should have got recognized. Uh, right. For sure. The nomination is all we really were asking for. The win, obviously, you know, there's so many things that goes into what wins. It's understandable, but the nomination at the very least should have gotten. Uh, in that spot because practically almost every other comic book movie that was made, Avengers, Black Panther, Venom, uh, you know, were getting recognized more than what Aquaman is getting recognized for. So, yeah, I know it was really uh, an awesome movie. And I think that I see Jason Momoa as Aquaman now. Yeah, for that sure. Was, that was my still hesitation with Justice League and even going into the trailers was just like, I'm not seeing him as Aquaman. I'm just seeing him playing Aquaman. Yeah, but like this is who they decided to cast. For. Exactly. 
but I think this, yeah, this film definitely solidified him as Jason Momoa is Aquaman. Aquaman. And yeah, and you, you know, and you for now, sure. now I feel like to the point where if whatever reason they recasted him, people are going to be like, that's not, that's not the Aquaman I like. Yeah. Oh, they better not recast. No, there's no talk. There's nothing like oh, okay. that. I'm just saying, like, I mean, you know, like the Spider-Man situations, like yeah. those kinds of things. Uh, like it, it, to me, it he was able to now, like now, I do say he is Aquaman rather than he is playing Aquaman. Right. Uh, in the exact same way that I said Emily Blunt is Mary Poppins rather than playing the character. It's really awesome right. when they can become. Yeah, can, mm-hmm. yeah. So, and I feel like all the all the characters <laughs> we, did that. Um, we didn't even finish that sentence. We're like, it's really great how he can. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's, our, the, that's our shorthand, guys. Sorry, we, we're just we're on the same. On the same, page. same exactly. Uh, but I feel like that that happened with all the characters. Amber Heard really was becoming Mara, and she became a, a total awesome character in her own way as well. Yeah, uh, I really liked her too. I thought she was really great. Um, I her loved, powers were so dope. Yeah, like so dope, and they made them like. I was like, wow. And I don't know if they they limited it to what she really can do. Uh, just because they already had to spend a lot on other things. So I'm interested to see if they're going to explore more. But she definitely can go bigger with her powers. Like, she can be more creative. Like, this was a lot of, like, little samples of, like, oh, I can, you know, take water out of you if I need to. Mm -hmm. I can create, you know. So essentially she can, like, kill you because she can dehydrate you, right? She can take all the water out of you. So the thing is, so it's funny that you mentioned that. And see, this is where my total fandom geek stuff starts coming out. Um, Was that in Justice League... The original version before Warner Brothers watered it down. That's a whole different topic there. Oh, but, don't even get Oscar started <laughs> on that. We'll be here all night. Uh, but there was a scene where she's fighting Steppenwolf, just like in the movie. And she actually tries to do that to Steppenwolf. Like, that was one of her, like, let me stop you. You, you know, you, you can't get away with it. Mm-hmm. Was that she, that he was that sucking the, the water out of him. Uh, but he was just able to, like, hit her. And then that stopped it from, uh, mm-hmm. no, don't even... <laughs> I wasn't saying nothing. Uh, but yeah, so it didn't, you know, he, it didn't work, but it was, it was an attempt. There was like a lot of, uh, visual like storyboards that was showing that. So it would have been nice to see things like that. But yes, I just, you just, you brought it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you hit the trigger word. Well, so. well, I wasn't, that wasn't, you know, glad, glad I was able to do that. No, but, but yeah, she was, she, her power was cool. And I really liked her, 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 just her character. She was, and I loved that. Can we talk about some scenes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when, the I'm first time, call. <laughs> the first time when when Aquaman was fighting his brother, um, the he, the Ring of Fire, the scene. Ring of Fire, when he challenged him to yes. to a duel, and he was about to die pretty much, yes. and Mara came in and she knew. I mean, she had she was still kind of like double agent at that point. Like she was still like she had to make it seem like she was still um, yes. loyal to the what's the brother's name Orm Orm Orm. Or Ocean Master. Whatever. Okay. Oh, okay. That she was still loyal to him, but secretly she really wanted to help Aquaman and protect him and be his kind of ally. Um, but it's like she she risked a lot by inter interjecting there and and, and intervening and saving Aquaman from him. Um, and and she basically she knew and they, they kind of explain it in a in a later scene where she's like, I basically like I can't return home. Um, I, I risked, I, I risked everything the moment I decided to save you. Yeah. Um, and we didn't really understand like the weight of her choice at the time, but when she, when she did kind of disclose that to Aquaman and basically said, I can't return home. Like, this is it. Like, we just have to move forward because there is no going back for me. Yeah. I, it just made me like love her even more because she's so loyal and she's so, she knew that it was going to basically like mess up her life, but she knew what was right. She knew what the right thing to do was. Right. And she made the right choice. And it just made me even more so just have like respect and admiration for her character. Absolutely. Uh, and then I really loved when she was on land and she was just kind of that aerial little mermaid naive <laughs> right. with like, live action. Uh... <laughs> right. There was a lot of, yeah. Um, so that was really awesome. Cause it, you really kind of get to really know like both sides of her. Like, yes, we, she knows, Underwater, like, you know, to the T. She was like a warrior underwater. Right. She knows exactly what she's doing. She knows how to live under there. But when she came on land, she was just like, uh, this is this is new. I don't know. Like, why are Walking people... Walking around on those... What do you call them? <laughs> oh, feet. <laughs> Practically. It was... Yeah. I mean, she had feet all along, but... Yeah. Um, and then, no, and then there was, like... There was just... The, there was a, the touch of them being romantically interested, but it never... 
yeah. like became a distraction. Mm-hmm. Like you were always getting that, like you were watching and you're just like, okay, we looks like they are becoming an item. It makes sense. They're, they're together. They're bonding. Uh, and then you get the big kiss at the end, but it wasn't, it didn't feel forced. It didn't feel like they were just like, oh, these characters have to be together. Like yeah. kiss them right now. Like, you know, it was just like, no, they wouldn't kiss right now. It's still, still fresh. They have a mission on the hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I really liked that development of it. Uh, it really made them became, become more, uh, stronger together like to the point where you like them together rather than like it's not working for me situation um and the same with the mom and the dad for for aquaman like you really yeah. believed in that relationship too uh, I, really I know at first it looked a little like cliche cringy with the whole like she washed up and they fell in love instantly yeah um but but once you see that she really like was caring for both of them the, the you know author and the and the father father can't even say the word. Uh, it was it was really nice. You really started to see that, and it and it worked at the very end when she came back. You were happy that she was back with yeah. the dad. And um, yeah, and that was I mean it was you know pretty in the beginning when she basically had to leave and go back to Atlantis because it was gonna if she didn't it was gonna put her son and her husband in 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 risk and in, in harm's way. So she was trying to save them, but she had like she had to leave them to save them, which was so heartbreaking just to watch that because you can only imagine. I, I, what I was really like thinking of that whole time was I was just sympathizing with the father because he's like my this the woman the love of my life has to leave yeah and my son is being being left without his mother and now I have to try to raise him on my own like I was like dang I mean I I felt for all of them but in that yeah. moment I was really really felt bad for the dad you know the kid Arthur was still really young at the time so he didn't he exactly right get a full grasp of what was going on but yeah that was hard, that was hard to watch but I did know I was like there's no way there's no way she's not gonna come back I was like I don't know how that was enough screen time I don't know like, when. I don't know how but um but I knew she was gonna come back and and thank God she did yeah it was it was awesome to, to see that moment when she came back uh with that like skeletons of the trench which i mean there's a lot of things you can really like talk about in this movie um but yeah no i mean the, the character just happened to work well the the villains uh you know ocean master you understood his position uh and it wasn't too too off where you were just like okay this is just you know him being a villain like it was legit like he he wants to get the seven kingdoms well four of the seven because not a little more available uh to really fight back against the surface and and then you had the you know Black Manta story where you was just like he was just on revenge for Aquaman. He wasn't trying to you know take anything over. He wasn't trying to kill you know the surface people. He was just trying to really get kill revenge Aquaman. for yeah for letting <laughs> his dad die. Yeah. So they were they were legit uh, threats as villains, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they didn't die. That's the biggest thing too. They yeah. neither of them died. So there's more story for them yep. coming up uh, with Aquaman too, which hasn't officially been. Uh, lit it's still under you know in that like we're thinking about it well hopefully with all the success that it's that it's you yeah. know kind of getting i'm right very now. confident it will yeah, yeah they're for just sure they're just letting the numbers i mean a lot of people are saying this is like the best dc film so Which, far. yeah For out of since man of steel yes because yeah. dark knight is not considered it's, part of this continuity yeah but, but that's, that's technically dc right yeah it is. i mean it's the right. dc universe but it's yeah right so like the in terms no, of like touching the dark right <laughs> <laughs> so like in terms of like the the universe, yes, it starts with Man of Steel, Batman v Superman. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they're saying it's the best movie since. So well, it depends on some people. Some well, would have made uh, this movie perfect is if uh, Amy Adams was in it. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> Lois Lane, what are you doing underwater? I, know, right? <laughs> I would have loved it. Everybody, everyone else would have been like, this doesn't seem like appropriate. <laughs> I would have been like, yeah. So no, uh, but no, yeah, it really, it was really awesome, and and the, the visuals were really good. Like, the the animals were were believable, <laughs> despite you know you would you would you can't really believe that they train any sea animals. So it's like it's maybe the dolphins with the kid. Maybe that was like the only like close one that they probably were able to reenact to some degree. But I don't think I think that was still just the kid on his own. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it was really awesome to see all this really visually come to life. Uh, and it, yes, it, it, it had to be new experiments, like the way that they filmed the actors, uh, they kept them on harness so they can like swing a little bit like you would in underwater. The hair had to like, you know, move. Really flow, look like it was flowy, like how it is exactly, underwater. Yeah. yeah. I liked all those little details. It was, it yeah. really was cool. Really well The hair thing, out. that was like, that was really cool that they did that. Um, I noticed that one right away. 
because you just yeah it really really just felt like it was floating um and they and like the way that they moved in some of the scenes like the one that comes to mind was when orm was talking to uh mara's dad the other king um and they, the way they were both like were just in the water and it really felt like that's the way that they would be in water like they wouldn't just be still and kind it, of like uh bobbing yeah you know up and down right but yet they swing. still they wanted to go wherever they wanted to. it wasn't like they were just like uncomfortable like right it looked really really cool um but yeah, so the big the big thing here was really uh, the turnaround for for DC films because there hasn't been a positive outlook with you know the DC films. I think the only positive really that struck with audiences was Wonder Woman. Um, so does does Aquaman surpass Wonder Woman for you? Mm, I really liked Wonder Woman, man. I really did. Uh... We'll leave it at that. You know, we won't even make you choose. <laughs> we won't even that's make an, you that's choose. That's an unfair question, man. Don't make me choose, please, because it's there's such great films. Aquaman definitely just freaking brought the, brought the A game with this. It did. I think it this really is going to do great things for the franchise and for for DC films moving forward. And um, man, it was just it was great. Yeah, there's there's a really a lot you can really talk about this uh, and just in different ways too, like the the story of it. A lot of people are saying those two things that really gripe with people. Um, one of it is that this is really uh, dialogue. The dialogue isn't really there. Like the, it's bad dialogue to some extent. Um, and I could see to some degree, some moments I can see where it was just like, yeah, they didn't really feel like, you know, you're getting the most in-depth conversation about like why we should attack the surface or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just feel like this movie the, well, the even focus with some of the phrases, like I will say, even like in the beginning when we first see Aquaman, he's like, permission to come on board. Exactly. I'm like, that's a little, right. a little cheesy, like not going to lie. Yeah. But hey, it's fine. It doesn't like take away what this film is for me. And, and so, I can see why people say that. Right. And some people were also saying that there was too much, that the going through the Seven Kingdoms was uh, too much to really ask for for the, for the audience to go through on the first movie. Yeah. And, and I understand that as well. But I, I, I feel like, you know, a movie can't necessarily assume it's going to get a sequel. Yeah. So it has so to. They're trying to put it all right. in there right now. Like, it's like, we got to go full throttle on this right now. We got to give them. We got to. Exactly. We got to put everything we can in this. Because so that's, you, don't, you never know. So that's why they decided to make this an adventure film where he has to get the trident and has to go through these different kingdoms. Or at least if it wasn't for Aquaman going through the kingdoms, it was uh, Ocean Master going to the other kingdoms to become that. Um, but they were all interesting. Like you really wanted, I, at least personally myself, wanted to explore these kingdoms a little bit more in its own way. I've, obviously, the ones that we couldn't was the the desert uh, because they were they were gone, mm-hmm. <laughs> they were dried up. But a boom, there goes my uh, <laughs> there goes your little joke, little fish water pun. Uh, then there's the trench, who are just practically creatures at that point. That was crazy. Uh, and I believe there was another one. Um, Oh, and the Lost Sea, which is lost, so you can't really <laughs> can't really get to it. Uh, but that one was really crazy because there was dinosaurs in that one. Mm-hmm. So there was just a lot of things that you know. It was kind of just like the movie. If the sequel can go wherever it wants to, right now, like it doesn't need to be restricted to Atlantis. Yeah. Um, and we still got enough of Atlantis. Obviously, yes, we didn't really get to see what does it look like for a day, daily person to wake up and you know walk swim across you know to the store or something. Like we didn't get those little details, but we got the the logist of the overall look of Atlantis, and I feel like that's mainly what it was introducing us to. So yeah, I really I, I really think that it was trying to make the most out of what it could, because it couldn't necessarily say, oh, we're gonna get a sequel, so we'll we'll save the trench for the second one, or we'll yeah. save Black Manta for the second one. Yeah, it left you enough where you want to see more, and hopefully that's what it and you know gets the sequel to go, but. Uh, I can understand why people had that feeling of I'm overwhelmed. There's too much going on right now. Like there's a war that they're trying to stop, but at the same time trying to fight a trident, but at the same time getting away from these creatures that want to eat them. Mm-hmm. I can understand that. I yeah. absolutely can. And uh, for me, I mean, if we're both loving the comic book Aquaman version and then knowing all that information, but seeing it as a movie as well, I, I still feel like it was tried just trying to make the most out of its two hours and 20 minutes that it had. Yeah. Which uh, I was surprised. I thought it was going to be a little shorter. I didn't know it was going to be that long. Yeah, if if they weren't concerned about that, I would be able to say there are some parts that you can cut out. 
uh, like, for example, the one that just comes to mind when they went to the fisherman kingdom mm-hmm. uh, and Orm kills that kingdom, that yeah. king. We didn't really need to see that. Mm-hmm. Like, I understand. It was cool, though. It was cool right. to see. But, like, that part didn't necessarily it wasn't add vital a lot. For us right. To see that. It could have been, like, a deleted scene kind yeah. of situation. Like, there was things that could have been deleted that would have trimmed it uh, if it wanted to, but it just wanted to make the most out of it. Yeah, So sure. Yeah. Um, so is Aquaman your favorite character out of this movie or Mira, or did you have a particular one? Uh, I mean, I, I, both of them were, were great. I'd probably, I mean, I'll probably, obviously it's like, I don't that, know. That's, that's usually, that's usually the, the thing with, with Aquaman in the comics now is that you can't think of him without Mira. Mira? The yeah. lot of times they, it, I feel like they were, they're a perfect package. Like they're a perfect duo. I feel like they just. I feel like I don't want to see I don't want to see either of them alone. Like I want to well, you, like you might huh? <laughs> you might when like he goes with Justice League, but well, yeah. I mean, but like if they do another Aquaman movie, oh which, no, yeah, they wouldn't. No, then I I'm like she better be right there by his side. Yeah, and they do this together because now I feel like they're like they're like a duo. Yeah, so I, I, agree. I can't. Yeah, I love them both. I agree. I'm curious about what they do with Orm because that was to me was the biggest one that they kept alive i really thought they were going to do the cliche movie route where they kill him or he puts himself where you know he can't be saved or whatever the the case is Mm -hmm. uh but they the fact that they saved him it reminded me a little bit too much of loki where it's like okay are we just keeping him so we can just like have that like oh he's good just kidding he's bad well you know i even thought that when he was when they were gonna when they were gonna do their ring of fire duel and he was basically like saying i'm giving you a chance to to leave and you know, never come back. Like, I don't... Because it's like, he didn't want to yeah. kill him. Right. So I was like, so is there, like, a, p- a little piece of his heart in there that's like, this is my brother. I I don't want to hurt him. You know, are they going to... Is it going to turn into kind of like a Thor Loki kind of scenario where they're because like... Because he had a weak spot for his mom. Yeah. Yeah. So, when he saw his mom, he, like, was in shock and mm-hmm. hugged her and was not like the bad <laughs> character he was portraying the entire yeah, time. Yeah, so I, I that did cross my mind when we, when we were watching it. So, I don't know. Hopefully, I mean... Yeah, a lot of people are saying this is very similar to Lo- to Thor overall. And I, I could see because you go to a whole different, you know, kingdom. And it's, like, been established that it's a high place kingdom and all that stuff. Um, but the characters are very different. Mm-hmm. Like, Thor was at first a little bit more uh, serious, but naive when it came to earth and then jason Momoa is a little bit opposite where he was a little bit naive at atlantis but he was very you know sure of himself on on the surface so mm-hmm. yeah and it and it and it still it still gives us a lot of room for different new stories i mean i could sit here and tell you you know what the comics have done so like can you can you see uh jason Momoa without a hand and have a hook because that's in the comics just yes. saying in like one episode or one uh, in, in one, one series, issue. yeah, one like a yeah, a little limited run, okay. yeah, yeah. That's like what is he candy turning into Candyman? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think they would do that. Man. I don't think they would go that route with doing that with Aquaman. I'm very curious as to what they do because a lot of times with his stories, uh, he's always losing something. Like there's some times where he loses his son. Uh, he, like his son was in the in the, at very early in the issues was killed by Ocean Master. <sighs> um. And loses his hand and oh, stuff like man. that. I don't. I don't think I can handle watching him lose like his I don't, son. It's too early for even for him to, him to have a son. Yeah, I mean he has so. one with Mar- Mara, right? Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we gotta let's yeah let's just like build that and explore that and <laughs> maybe maybe if like if we get to like movie twentieth like the Marvel Cinematic Universe maybe at that point he can have a kid but yeah it's it's definitely too soon. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, any scene? Any favorite scene? Uh, loved the scene with Ludi Lin. <laughs> um, no, actually, honestly, I that was one of my favorite scenes when they they were there in Sicily or Italy. Yes, yes. Um, and the whole the whole like thing like when they first got to Italy and she was, um, Mara was kind of playing with the water in that fountain and the kid was like making she was making these, uh, kind of beautiful shapes and things with the water and the kid was like "Ooh, oh my god like and trying to show his parents yeah and like she was like trying to eat the flowers like that was a kind of adorable um you know it's like oh she doesn't know what those are haha um and then you know and they're just kind of hanging out and, and they're trying to discover uh they're trying to find what are they trying to find where are the tridents located yes yeah 
and uh, and then they attack. Black Manta comes and attacks, and Merc comes and attacks, and they're fighting. Um, and we get to see Merc like you know chase like that whole sequence of him like running through buildings yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and like that was really fun and exciting. Kind of want to go back and ask Ludi Lin and be like, so I know I was even thinking that too. <laughs> so like. When you had to stick your head in the toilet, like, was that a real toilet or was like, like right would, now that we've I, seen the movie, there's yeah, now there's additional the, questions. I know, like all these like questions we could we could think to ask him. Like it was cool, but it was really cool just to I don't know, just to see. And I definitely understood what he was talking about, where it's like a lot of my fans don't realize that it's me when they see the film because it doesn't it, it, not it, at all. It, doesn't look like him. No. Like we were able to. We knew who he was. Right. But we prepared for it. We, yeah. yeah. We were on the lookout. But yeah, you t- I w- you wouldn't have known. He definitely looks completely different. Um, but that was it. Was a fun scene. Um, Mara got hurt in that scene, right? Like, yeah. Well, the, both of them. Sad. Yeah. Well, or, Aquaman, or no, 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 Aquaman. It was Aquaman yeah. who got like a yes, yeah, like shanked from Black Manta because yeah. he had the the at, like that that made the 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 knife made with Atlantean steel. Yes. Um, Look which, at that. Yeah, I know, right? And I, honestly, that I didn't know it was going to get that. Uh, it, I mean, it wasn't so gory, but it got a little graphic, like getting shanked, like getting stabbed like that. And yeah. like, I was like, oh, I wasn't I wasn't prepared for that. Um, I just didn't think I was going to see bloodshed, I guess. But we did. And uh, not like rated R. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Nothing too graphic, but it was I just I, it wasn't on my radar. I was exactly. like, oh, we're not going to see blood see spilt. But yeah. we did. And um, so that was. Like oh my god, like this is real deal. This is serious. This isn't a game. But yeah, I really liked that whole scene. That was, it was um, a lot happened in it, and I I just I thought it was great. No, I, I'm right there with you. That is my favorite scene as well. Uh, just be, I just love the way that they deliver that too. Where you kind of went back and forth between Mera fighting the guards and then Aquaman fighting Black Manta. Yeah, uh, that was really just nice for him to like Aquaman really to be like oh dang I created a villain here because I let his father die. Mm-hmm. Like he reflects on that after the fight. Um, and he really let it like, and I and that's another thing I said to you and Daniel. Daniel, shout out to Daniel by the way because uh, Daniel loved this movie. He couldn't yes. be here on the episode, but he saw it with us, and he just has nothing but great things to say about it. He was even to this morning. He was just talking about <laughs> was he? Uh, yeah, when you guys saw it the second time, and he was like, "Oh, it was amazing. It was just as good seeing the second time. I loved it." Like just going yeah. on and on. So shout out to Daniel. Yes, and to Justin who saw it with us as well. And oh, loved yeah, the movie of too. Yeah. Um, and he loved it as well. I thought it was great. Uh, so yeah, it was, uh, what was my point? <laughs> Wait, what did I say before I before all that? So we're in Italy. We're talking about the fight sequence and how it panned from between the both of them. Black Manta revealed it. Oh, oh, it, oh, okay. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. So Aquaman let his, let the dad die. And I, and maybe cause I didn't, I didn't have such a great, uh, um, background on Aquaman, but I didn't think he was going to like, just let him die like that. So that was kind of a little surprising. And that was like in the beginning sort of. And I was like, wow. Like, I thought he was at the very least going to like, because the dad was pinned under this uh, thing in the submarine. A little torpedo, yeah. Yeah, so he couldn't get it up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going on with him. Sorry. So excited about this movie. <laughs> um, they, couldn't get the tor- they couldn't get the torpedo off of him. And, uh, and, the, and the son, Black Manta, was like, help him. And I thought at least Aquaman was going to go over there and, like, pick up the torpedo and be like, you know, there, uh, you know, don't let this happen again. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But he didn't. He just straight up was like, "What did he say to him?" The ocean, ask the ocean for forgiveness. Yeah, 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 exactly. I was like, "Whoa!" I, even that, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't think that was he was gonna. Is is that his kind of part of his character? Kind of like, uh, well, no, because it definitely wasn't. Like, I feel like uh, let's say if, like maybe if it was Batman or some or, or another superhero who. For sure, like Captain America. I know we're switching universes here, but like Captain America would have went and like yeah. lifted it up. Yeah, 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 such yeah. a good guy. Absolutely. Um, and him being a superhero, I just assumed he was gonna, you know, help him out, but he didn't. He let him die, and he felt a little remorse about it, I guess. Right? I mean, yeah. Because he created. Because he knew what he, he, he what he, he knew why Black Manta yeah. was coming after him when they were on the boat, and he was talking to Mara about it. So, um, but yeah, it was just. Uh, I I and you know and those things that I'm saying this to say like you know that scene kind of. Uh, surprised me a bit or seeing uh, Aquaman get stabbed with the Atlantean still that surprised me a bit there were things in this film that I wasn't expecting I didn't think I I, I guess I went in thinking this is not it's going to be a a, a typical cliched superhero film but I thought it I thought 
I liked that I was getting surprised. There yeah, were moments that, that were sense. where I didn't think they were going to happen. So that's like awesome when a when you go in thinking that a movie's going to just like follow a formula, a format or a formula and you get these pleasant surprises or you go, "Whoa, oh, I didn't I wasn't expecting that." Like that's that's awesome. Exactly. I can I definitely understand that. Um to me, one of the things that I really enjoyed was when he got his costume. Um, it was really awesome to have that moment where he is in his comic book accurate costume because it's just a league costume that he had. Uh, it was it, it was a nice touch, you know, a little bit of green, a little bit of gold highlights that, you know, that he wore in the comic books. But this one was full on. Like, that's what you see the toys and, you know, the cartoons as. That's how he's looking. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they, they embraced that. Uh, and they also embraced him riding a seahorse because if you like Google like Aquaman jokes or memes, one of the common ones is him riding a seahorse and not being taken seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here they, you know, they they switched it up where he actually looked pretty awesome riding a seahorse, getting ready to fight Orm. Um, and then even the sequence fighting Orm, uh, both at the Ring of Fire and at the very last battle. Uh, I enjoyed those moments as well. Those are a lot of highlights for me as well but the the biggest one was the the, the sequence in italy just the way it was filmed mm-hmm. i really like that yeah. um so and yeah ludy lynn was the only soldier that survived so yeah so, so it's I, like if we get a sequel he can come back and, now he has his own revenge yeah. right now but he his had... revenge is with mara so we'll see if that Ooh. yeah although there, there is one thing because i i know you saw young justice and you know aqualad when i'm saying aqualad you know who i'm talking about yes um see the thing here is that they can explore further is that you know that that is Aquaman's sidekick, but his dad is actually Black Manta. So Aqualad's dad is yeah. Black Manta. What? Yeah. So there's <gasps> there's another uh, possible storyline that they could take if they ever decide to bring Aqualad to the the big screen. Wow. So. So in the okay, wow. I got I got a ton of questions now about that, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> we're we're going to watch Young Justice right now. I know, right? <laughs> that's insane. Wow, that blew my. But mind. yeah, so that I mean, I'm happy that because. We never got to it in in just in Young Justice to the Black Manta character and like seeing that storyline, um, but now that you know who Black Manta is, it's exciting to be able to share that with you. Nice. So well, thank you. For now me. we can have some comic book conversation, <laughs> <laughs> Aquaman related. <laughs> right. uh, so with all that being said, what is your score for this film? Oh, easy, man. I give this a five out of five. Wow. Five out of five. I thought it was a great film. Um, start to finish, it was it was it was thrilling. It was entertaining. Uh, Jason Momoa was great as Aquaman. I mean, I can't really... I know you're saying he looks nothing like the comic. Which is now fine. Which is now fine, and I can't... Like, now that he... I mean, you know, we knew he was Aquaman in Justice League, but now that we've seen him in Aquaman, it's like I can't think of anybody else who I would want to be Aquaman. I thought he just brings so much to the role. Um, So much heart, yeah. Yeah, and loved... Mara loved his parents. Uh, shout out to Nicole Kidman. Shout out to the actor that played the dad. You know, you know his. his uh, he's the only superhero from the DC heroes that we know that has a dad that has both his parents still, still alive. Still alive. Yeah. yeah. Like Which Batman is- has no parents. Superman only has his mom. Wonder Woman only has his mom. Her mom. Flash only has his dad. Dang. It's pretty. That's like <laughs> right. So sad and great that they're still becoming superheroes despite that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just, it was fun. The visuals were beautiful. Uh, I thought it was edited really nicely and it even did some different, like some cool, some cool shots that they had. One in particular was when he was in the bar and those, uh, kind of biker gang guys came up behind him. It looked like they were going to give him a hard time, cliche, like, but they were just asking tough. for a photo. And then they kind of like put in some shots. It looked like they were like selfies, but it was like, it wasn't from, it wasn't like phone quality footage. It was like. You could yeah. tell it was for a movie, but that was cool. Like they inter inter uh, interjected some like really cool shots, and and uh, I just thought it was a great film. I thought it was really. It, I could see why people said it, it. Maybe there was a lot going on, but like you were saying, like they didn't know if they're going to get another one, so they're just like, you know, they're trying to give us the most bang for our buck right now. In in a and, way that works, yes. yeah. And I feel like it did work, and it didn't. It wasn't like oh, I'm getting lost, or I'm I don't understand what's happening, or there's too much going on. It wasn't like that. It was, and it all made sense, and it flowed, and uh, it was just a great film. It was great. It was great, great, great. I 100 percent agree. Ruben, get this man a comic book. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait to just explore the the like more. Like I I want to. I definitely. We we better get another Aquaman film. We have to. I can't wait to. You know. We like whatever else he's gonna be. Well, in. I mean, I, we got some animated movies we can watch. <laughs> right. Like I want to know what more up, about. Up. 
I can I can easily go through what we have here. We have Young Justice to continue exploring. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> You Let's want to see it. his kid? We can watch the 2001 animated series. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he has his kid in that one because he's an established, like he's an older Aquaman in that show. But, yeah. Um, no, I, I mean, I 100 percent agree with you. It's a five out of five for me as well. Uh, it just really was exactly what I wanted, not just from a superhero movie, but from Aquaman. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing his character, you know, being familiar with it, and to be able to see it live action really worked well. I understand there are some things that to people cannot work the dialogue the the flow of the movie um and you know to each their own but for me it worked for me it worked and i didn't get distracted by the by the dialogue by the cheesy moments yeah i understand like the you know prepare permission to come on board or when they were like going into uh the the sahara Mm -hmm. and they're walking out of the ocean in that like cliche Baywatch style with uh, Pitbull <laughs> cover song playing in the background. Uh-huh. Like, I understand how that doesn't work uh, for a lot of people or even people question about it or maybe there was just too much and there's so many questions. But, I mean, also at the same time, though, like, uh, you know, like, a bunch of, like, kids and teenagers are going to watch this, too. You can't have the dialogue so exactly over the top and so, like, hard to comprehend that yeah. it's going to deter you know, younger audience from wanting from enjoying the film, too. You and, know, it's like a happy meeting. Right, and, and, I, 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 was... and I feel like that's... Almost to the point where it's just, wh- what about the dialogue wasn't clicking with you? Outside of the, yes, there's some cliche, you know, one-liners. But, like, Ammon and the Wasp had that this year as well. So, mm-hmm. like, other other superhero movies have had that. Yeah. Uh, and then a lot of people have criticized when DC films were going, you know, a little too dark, a little too symbolic. You know, with, like, Batman v Superman about the god and stuff. Like, people weren't, like, liking that. Yeah. So there's it's your like make there, up your mind. Like there's your what heavy you dialogue. Want? So yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's very you can't odd. please everyone. That's um, more bottom line. Right. Exactly. Because the the fear was this the, this movie would have flopped. DC would have just been like you know what it's we're not going to just continue that route. It's not working. Audiences are you know hating on it when they're not buying tickets. So this one uh, and alongside Wonder Woman have been able to. Uh, show that audiences do want to see this these movies. Mm-hmm. They just don't need Warner Brothers trying to make it too much like Marvel, mm-hmm. which is what happened to Justice League. Different yeah. story. Different story. <laughs> we won't talk about that. But uh, yeah, so many great things to say about this movie. Uh, it's a five out of five. It, meet, it met everything I wanted uh, and more. I can understand some of the flaws. I hope the flaws get improved in the sequel. Yeah. Uh, it's not a perfect film by no means, but yet it definitely managed to bring a solid, entertaining film that definitely you delivered. want more from. So. Exactly. And yeah, I, I mean, it's going to be in my top 10, so I'll be giving more personal reasons why I loved it. But Ooh. yeah. Right. Where though? Where we don't know. Tune in Tune next in. week. <laughs> right? <laughs> there you go. I like how we have the same, we have the same sync right there. I still got to organize my top 10. <laughs> but you got one week. Um, oh, we got to see if some of the, these other films we got to finish watching. Exactly. So we'll see if they, uh, they have, crack our top 10. But it's crazy that by the time they, the, the listeners listen to the, that episode next week, we're going to have to, we're going to have seen all of them. Yeah. That's insane. It's crazy. Uh, but yeah, so listeners, um, I, I mean, hopefully you guys are okay with the slight delay for the releases of next week's episode as well for, for the holiday. Um, but yeah, our top 10 is going to be coming. Uh, we're almost there. We got one movie we also got to talk about, mm-hmm. but outside of that, it stars Donnie's favorite Amy Adams. <laughs> I think that's how, yeah. is that how you break it down? It, it's Vice starring Amy Adams, then <laughs> Christian Bale. Right, and then all the other actors. <laughs> but, uh, yes. So hopefully you enjoyed Aquaman. Let us know what you thought. Let us know if you maybe didn't feel the same way me and Donnie felt. Maybe you didn't, it just didn't click for you. Uh, we'd love to hear all thoughts about the movie. Um, you can let us know on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Team Realist. That's Team R-W-E-L-I-S-T-S. Um, or you can leave some comments on YouTube. Or if you really liked our episode so much, you can review us on iTunes uh, and help us reach more audiences. Yep. That'd be awesome. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode. I hope you liked it. And until next time. Bye, guys.